In this lesson, we'll explore Painter's very powerful collection of cloner brushes. As you can see, there's quite a number of variants, and as usual, you can hover over each one to get an idea of how it might operate. Let's take Chalk Cloner and make some strokes. Let's switch to Colored Pencil Cloner. Now, what is the source image here? We will open the Clone Source panel to see that, by default, the current pattern is the source image. If I switch to another pattern, then indeed my strokes will reflect the current pattern. Now, typically we are going to want to designate a photo or some image other than a pattern as the clone source, and here's where you can access any image and define it as the clone source. So open source and we'll go to our collection of source images, and I will choose Sunflowers. When I go open, Sunflowers is my source image. So at this point, when I make some strokes, I'm going to be making strokes that reveal the source image in a different style based on the quality or the characteristic of this particular variant. So I will change to different variants and see what happens. I have a custom palette devoted to cloners, which I will open and show you that there are numerous cloners here. And as I hover over each one, I can see what the actual variant is. These are my favorites out of the 40 or so that are available. Now this one is showing its name. It's being viewed as text, which you can achieve in all of these other ones. The important thing is that since they all use the same category icon, it's going to be difficult for you to distinguish among them unless you actually move your cursor over to the palette. So let's make each of these viewed as text. I will do a right click or on the Mac a control click. And when I tap on the icon, I can choose view as text. And so now I'll just open this up a little bit. I'll do the same with each of these. Now I also have an eraser and I have a blender, the grainy water blender, and I've chosen an alternative to the basic paper as a paper texture. I'd also like to add the iterative save command. So I'll do that by going to the custom palette menu and then indicating that the cloning palette is the one I want. I'll go to file, iterative save. There it is. I'll click OK and it now becomes part of my custom palette. I'll just move it over by holding the shift key down. Now if I want to see the source image while I'm working, I can check this and now my source image is showing. I can move it over and holding the space bar down, just scroll it over so that everything is now in a position so I can see the source image as well as work on the clone copy. And notice that when I do have the source image open, I will see a crosshair cursor as I work. Notice the crosshair showing near the top of the vase as I work. I'll switch to the Impressionist cloner, and I quite like scribbling with that one. In fact, I'll just delete everything so far and proceed with my Impressionist scribbling, and I can look at the crosshair on the source image over here on the left to see where I'm painting from. I can also turn tracing paper on, and that will help me see where I'm painting from and I can reduce or increase the opacity of the tracing paper as I like. So I'll toggle the tracing paper off once again. Notice that when I'm working with a cloner brush, my color picker is grayed out. This makes sense because cloner brushes take color and value information from the source image. You can turn any brush into a cloner by using clone color, which means simply by enabling this little rubber stamp icon. Let's try that. Let's go to a category that is not a cloner category, and let's make the Syrah brush into a cloner. Now normally the Syrah brush works with the current color, as you can see, 
and it applies a series of dots similar to the technique of pointillism or pointillism by George Seurat from the late 19th century. But if I enable clone color over here, this little rubber stamp icon, now my little dots are going to be taking clone color information, color and value from the clone source. And again, notice the position of the crosshair on the source image. I'll show you another way of beginning a clone project. I'll just move this little guy over and set it up so. And I'll close the sunflowers image with Command or Control W. And I'll also just delete the contents of this untitled image. Now, I can dump the sunflowers so that there is no longer a source image in this panel. That's just fine. I can open an image using the usual Command or Control O, and this time I will open another sunflowers image. There it is. I'll simply go to the file menu and do the clone command. This is the clone source in my clone source panel. I can choose to delete the contents of that copy and turn on tracing paper, and I'm basically doing what we were doing before. I can make some painted strokes with one or a combination of cloner brushes. I can see how it's going. Now you see what happened here? I was not using clone color, so I will designate clone color once again and just make that stroke right on top of the blue stroke that I had before. And I'll dismiss this without saving it. Another way of creating a clone, perhaps more quickly, is with the quick clone command. And when you do that, you dismiss or close the source image, and you automatically get the deleted copy and tracing paper is on. So that's just a much quicker way of getting to the place that we were before. I want you to see some of the images that I've created with cloner brushes. This was a photo of an apple and I made a pencil sketch cloner with it. Here's your familiar sunflowers and a Van Gogh style clone painting based on it. This photograph was cloned with several sources based on different image effects that were applied to the photo and then a variety of cloner brushes were used with that. Here's a photo of a house, and quite a house, I must say. And this was given a different color scheme before I cloned it in this style. So in our next lesson, you'll have a chance to do some clone painting on your own.